the weight is final and that is where cult begins it doesn't start as cult it starts as a, a genuine church and it goes through a process of occult and the last stage it becomes cult once it becomes cult it is where the 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 church leader is recognized as a spiritual father because of even if people they they come physically and attend church there physically but they also belong into a spiritual family and this spiritual family will make sure that it breaks all your physical and biological relationship with your biological family you no longer have a good family whether with your wife or whether with your kids or whether with your husband your world it is in this church and during that time we had several church programs because the intention is to keep people in the church that is the reason why in most cases you find people staying in that particular church because they have to be in the church they have to be far away from the world their system wants them to be locked in that church so that indoctrination can be easy on them so we had several services we call them miracle services breakthrough services prophecy services we came with different names so that the lives of our follower could be associated with church and the the teaching or the preaching in those churches we don't preach christ i remember very well when i came they told me and said when you preach you should not preach about christ you should preach about prosperity you should preach and promote about witchcraft people have been troubled by by witches at night people have been bewitched by family members and all those kind of preachings so the preaching is an indoctrination of fear and bondage because when you listen to such sermons when such sermons fill up your mind and your spirit after church service you start to be confused and you start wondering and said last night indeed i had an a a, a dream where people were chasing me so this means that i've got a spiritual attack and when people realize that we open what we call one-on-one -on -one consultation so this is a system as i've said mr chair that it starts as a church and it goes into a level of acquiring power from which doctors are becoming part of a secret society and once it becomes part of the secret society it becomes part of a cult where the church leader has the final weight on every member in the church and once it becomes an occult it goes to what we call one-on-one -on -one consultation the real purpose of one-on-one -on -one consultation mr chair is to have a direct influence to your members because pulpit it's where you use it to advertise your powers or to demonstrate your powers to the crowd and once people saw that you are able to prophesy people calling them by names which i will come on that part on how do they do it people long to have a chat with you on one on one or, or on a private space so that is where the one on one platform are always associated to this kind of practices now the pulpit or a sunday service it is not a normal service like the churches where we we come from or our traditional churches as we know them especially here in south africa we know that on a sunday service a family will come just to worship the lord but in this setting a sunday service is a place where the cult leader sat down and he he brought a strategy to raise money because in every service they have to be a miracle and after that particular miracle they have to be money that is raised 
Money in which sense? In other churches, they will collect normal offering, as we know it. And after collecting normal offering, they will give a space and say, go and buy the oils which are, are, have been uh, set at a particular corner in the church. They, they open the sales in the house of the Lord. So people are able to go and buy the merchandise in the house of the Lord. And how do they do it? Firstly, they will allow a testimony to come. Somebody will come. Most of them, they've been bought. They, they, they buy this testimony. Others, it is true, they have experienced a certain power. But their testimony has been scripted down. They tell you how to say it. Before you can come and speak direct what comes from your heart, you meet the, uh, the senior prophet or the church leader or the cult leader, and he will tell you on how to say it. A lot of testimonies, a lot of testimonies that we see on these churches, it is not what comes from the heart. It is what has been manipulated, and somehow... It is very amazing on how they manipulate it. Let's say for an example, somebody says, I've been looking for a job and since I used this oil, I did not get a job. Now, the one who is a spiritual leader or a spiritual father will be the one putting weights in that person's mouth and say, the reason you did not get a job is because of witchcraft in your family. So when you testify there, you should say, the reason I did not get a job was witchcraft. And after I have used the oil, I've got a job. So how they structure their testimony is to promote the power of the cult leader and also the product that has been sold in the church. Then after that, people, they will flock and buy those oils. Once you have bought any material from those churches, you, you accept what I call a spiritual covenant. And this is where it's a little bit tricky because it does not happen like a normal covenant or you don't take an oath like what I have done this morning, Mr. Chair. Mm. This one, it happens spiritually. In which sense? In the following sense. Once you, you use, whether it is the water from the church or the oil or the salt, whatever point of contact that you use from that particular church, it is followed by episodes of dreams because these are spiritual matters it don't it does not manifest in the physical world it starts by dreams what kind of dreams you can see yourself in that church and you see yourself with the pastor giving you instructions those are the kind of dreams the other kind of dreams it can be sexual dreams where a member always experiences this continuous kind of dreams. Other kind of dreams, they see themselves being underwater. It starts as a dream. Other dreams, they see themselves with the church leader giving them something to eat. And after they have dreamed those kind of dreams, they go back to the cult leader and say, I have experienced this kind of dream. I need spiritual help. And the cult leader understands very well the interpretation of those dreams and what does it stand for. And he will be able to take them from step one to another step. That is the reason a member of such church, even if they can have a headache, instead of going and buying panad or grandpa, they go to the cult leader to consult for a headache. Because their life is being controlled by this church. So anything that happens to them, they have to go and get a clarity from the cult leader. And the cult leader is in a position where he's able to manipulate and do what it pleases. Others have been raped by the same cult leader, but it does not look like rape, Mr. Chair. The reason why it doesn't look like rape, it is because... After this individual had this particular dream where he saw herself in an intercourse and intimate space with a church leader, the following day he starts or she starts to develop, this particular person starts to develop certain desires to this cult leader. 
And as she goes and explains to the cult leader what she has dreamt, the cult leader knows and understands very well that a seed of lust has been deposited in this particular person. So the cult leader will only act on those that he has identified certain signs on them. And that is the reason why their raping process will be continuous. It will be something that happens today and it, it comes again after a month. It comes and funny enough, you find it is the victim driving her car or the victim, the victim moving to the cult leader just to be raped. I am sorry to put it that way, but that is how it is. And these cult leaders, before they, 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 they can do those acts, they groom their people. By grooming, I'm referring to where they make sure that they give you a position that is closer to them. You are, you are able to see their bank balances or bank statements so that they can show you how powerful they are. They are able to even speak with politicians on a loudspeaker where this woman who has been groomed will be listening and talk to high-profile people, business people, people of influence. And by so doing, they are making this one who's going to be a victim of rape to look up to this man as a powerful man. And once the cult leader has made sure that he has groomed this person, and that is where the actual acts begin. The difference between this kind of, 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 of rape or, or abuse with the one that we normally hear on the news or we read it is they don't go outside the church. These cult leaders uses the church, their church, usually they call it their church because they are the founders of those church, uses their church as a place to pick which one they want to use as a victim. They cannot go outside on the street and do that because they will lose the case. But they make sure that they use those people in the church who have been initiated to believe in them. And these powers, how does it operate? Once you, you join, it is like you are selling your soul. By selling your soul, it means that you allow your body to become an instrument of demons. Because when you start performing those miracles or you, you prophesy to people, it is the demon that you have acquired from that particular place that is in operational upon your life. And once that demon is controlling your life, the demon will come and have a particular habit or character upon your life. You are a man of the cloth, but this particular demon pushes you to go to the taverns and drink after a powerful sermon you find yourself in the tavern drinking this is the demon inside of you this demon makes you to to have multiple relationships so you find that there is an imbalance between what you are preaching and what you are living because of preaching you are using your gift and your experience the bible says the gift of the lord they are without repentance some of these leaders, they've got charisma. So they use their charisma and experience, but while their character portrays that of a sinner. So there is that imbalance. And once there's that kind of imbalance, followers of that particular church will also begin to behave like their leader. We normally call it transference of spirits, but it, it has to do with more of grooming, if we have to be literal. Because of the pastor will be close to the worship team members. In most of the time, they are women. And as he's part of them, he starts to show them his private life. And by so doing, he is grooming them to live a sinful life. And in the worst case scenario, that is where you find a, a one man who is sleeping with five women who are part of the worshiping team in the same room at the same time 
And when such things happen, they don't talk about it because they say this is our daddy, it's our spiritual father. And when they do those things, they twist the word of God. And these young people, they don't question because they've realized this is a man of power who is able to talk with politicians, who is able to talk with influential people. So whatever he says, it means we have to follow it. So you heard it for yourself from Mr. Makado himself, the one that was a charlatan before, the one that once affiliated, that was once initiated under these dark spells of the occultic from Nigeria. People, when we talk about these things, some of you, you think they are too far-fetched. These things are not far-fetched at all. These things exist. And everyone that you know, if you have a family relative, if you have someone that is close to you that is still going to these prophetic churches, whether in South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Malawi, anywhere under the sun, anywhere in Africa, believe you me, the powers that, are, that these charlatans are operating under, they are occultic. They are from the dark world. There is nothing of God. There's nothing of God at all, at all. Share this video. Leave a comment below if you want part two of his entire confession. And if you're first on this platform, I'm Prof X, Mr. Pull the Trigger. And I'm here to pull the trigger on all the charlatans that are using the Bible, that are using the word of God to scam people, to rob people, to fool people, and to lead people astray so that they can enrich themselves. End charlatanism. This is the time, 2022. We ain't taking nonsense anymore. It's better we close down all the churches and we have an appeal to the governments, all the governments in Africa. Please intervene. If you know a particular you know, representative in any of your governments, in any country that you are in, please share with them some of these videos that I'm putting up here. We need their contribution. We need them to come to the table. We need them to make a move. We need them to serve the citizens. We need them to protect the citizens. It's their responsibility in the constitution to serve and to protect. They need to protect believers. Christian believers are under attack. They are being manipulated. They are being robbed. They are being taken for a ride. They are being lied to. They are being exploited. And if the governments are still quiet, that makes us question this whole thing that has to do with charlatans and the politicians themselves. Because they can't be silent about these things when they've been observing them for all this time. Please raise awareness. Share this video. Make sure that it hits home. Make sure that people get awake. Make sure that people smell the coffee. We can't keep entertaining these criminals. They need to be behind bars. That's where they should be because what they're doing is crime. It's, it's so devilish. It's criminal in nature. Let's put an end to this. Share this video. I'll check you out on the next episode. Mr. Pull the Trigger, I'm out. Sayonara.